Hello everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And let me pull this lip curl in because I just got my, sorry, thank you. I just got my hair curled. Crystal just um just curled my hair. So hey y'all, Crystal Latrice Bella, go check her out. She's on O'Neill Lane. But um, today's topic is gonna be about dating. So this is gonna go, this video is going up into my sex talk group. Um, for those of you all that have been following me, we have two groups now. So some content will be for married ladies, some content will be for it will just be general um topics that anybody could uh grow from and utilize uh the information but today we're going to be talking about dating um i have a few questions um can you date without having sex is sex a part of dating it's just a simple yes or no um my next question is um well not necessarily a question but a statement that I hear often, and I used to hear my mom say this a lot too. I ain't never had a problem with getting on no man. I hear women say that. I hear women say that they have never had a problem with getting a man. And this is the question because that's the statement. I have never had a problem with getting a man. My question to you is, what type of man are you attracting? That's the question. See, the, the, the question is not about if you can get a man or not. The real question is, what type of man are you attracting? For real. That's the bigger question, okay? Okay. So we are gonna get into it. Um, I have a lot of people, and let me let me just say this and throw this out there, because I have not been on the dating scene for over twenty years, about twenty two, twenty three years, something like that. It twenty two years for sure. So I know that the dating scene has changed. I know that. It's a lot of online stuff going on that I have never, ever been a part of. So the things that I want to talk about is certain principles. Because whether you're dating and it's online, whether you're dating and you met him walking in the grocery store, whether you're dating and he's a friend of a friend of a friend, the principles don't change. Okay? And... It's certain things that have to go on when you are dating people. It's certain questions that you have to ask. And th those questions are going to let you know what direction you need to go in. Because I have been speaking so much um, about wife school and, you know, becoming a wife and being a certain type of woman. When you are dating, you need to be intentional. Meaning the person needs to know your intent. <coughs> Sorry about that. This has to go on from the beginning. That way you don't waste your time. See, if I if you meet me and I tell you from the beginning, look, I'm not looking for nothing. I, this is me as a woman telling a man, I'm not looking for nothing serious. I'm just enjoying myself. Right now, I just want to have a good time. That is completely different than saying, when you meet me, my intention is to become a wife. At this point in my life, I want to date men who are interested in being married. If you're not interested in being a husband, then there's no need for me and you to date. You got to be intentional from the beginning. That way you don't waste your time. See, a lot of ladies know what it is to be single, meaning you have been single. You didn't raise your children. And some women, and, and I know this to be true, because my mom used to always say, I'm not bringing nobody in this house with you up in here with me. And it had nothing to do with me. It had everything to 
do with her feeling like she had to protect me. Because we all have heard the horror stories of the, the boyfriend or the or stepdaddy messing with the child or abusing the child or whatever. So her position was, as long as you admire her, everybody that I deal with, it ain't nothing serious because I know I'm not bringing them up in the house. I'm not bringing them here with you. As long as you here, they can't come. So with that being said, her approach to dealing with men and dating was completely different than a woman that is going in it and saying, I want a male figure in my household for my children. So me dating, it is intentional because I'm looking for something or I want someone to see a certain quality in me and say, I want her to be my wife. So that's the first thing first. When we are dating, who is our audience? We want to make sure that we are communicating with the people who want the same thing that we want. Sometimes people say, well, I don't even really want to call this dating. I'm just really looking for like a friend to hang out with and, you know, a certain level of kind of companionship and just, you know, when something go on, I got somebody that I can pick up the phone and call and say, hey, you want to go chill and you want to go here and want to do that? If y'all never saw the movie Holiday, this is kind of similar to what Holiday is all about. Really cute romantic comedy. If you never saw Holiday, write that down. It's a raunchy romantic comedy, but the, the, ba the, the movie is about a guy and a girl coming together so that when the holidays roll around, they wouldn't be lonely. They wanted to be able to have a person to bring to the holiday party, to bring to the 4th of July picnic, to bring to this, this, that, the other. Long story short, we all know the people ended up being together because that's how romantic comedies go. But you have people that really live their life like this. In other words, I'm just looking for a go-to person. Like when I got some shit going on, I don't want to have to be figuring out who I'm going to bring to this, that, the other. I just want to be able to pick up the phone and have a go-to person. With that being said, let's talk about sex. Let's talk about it. When you are dating, this is just a yes or a no. It ain't even a yes or a no because it's a no. When you are dating, everybody don't need to know where you lay your head at. When you entertaining these people, Everybody don't need to know where you lay your head at. I'm, I'm giving you the rules to this shit because you don't need people popping up at your house. If they want to entertain you, you tell them time, place, location. G you know, g give me the location and the time. I'll come, I'll come there. Everybody don't need to know where you lay your head at. See, when you'd have been on a few dates with them, and by this time, you didn't you you didn't realize if they got a social media. If they don't have a social media, I'm always kind of I don't know. I'm always kind of funny when people say they don't have a social media. I don't know because in 2021, most people have a social media, even if they're not active on the social media. Most people have some form of social media. I know everybody don't, but I'm just saying. But this gives you the opportunity to kind of do your research a little bit. Kind of see the kind of stuff that they posting. Yeah. You talking to them. You finding out the things that they enjoy doing uh, during their free time. You finding out about their upbringing. You finding out about their work history. Oh, yeah. Th these things are important. See, I don't know what kind of shit y'all be talking when y'all dating these people. Because for me, a Netflix and chill, that shit come like way, 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 way down the line. Before we Netflix and the chillin', there's some other shit that went on way before Netflix and the chillin'. But a lot of y'all jump right in it and y'all want to Netflix and chill. And I don't understand that as a 40-year-old woman. I It's like when you're dealing with college students, that's different. But for your grown ass, bitch, you ain't got no business Netflix and then chillin' and shit like that. When At this point in your life, if you 40 like me, he should be and establish some things in his life. Meaning he should have a work history. Yeah, we, we need what, what you been doing. Because see, I need to know what you've been doing all your life. You went to school? Okay, well, you graduated from... Okay, oh, you didn't graduate. Okay. 
See, those type of things right there tell you certain things. I don't like to put a lot of I don't like to put a lot of emphasis on education as far as post-secondary education because you ain't got to have a bachelor's degree or a professional degree to be successful, okay? But when you tell me that you didn't graduate, but then you didn't go and go to pursue the GED either, that those are those things, it tells me certain things, y'all, it does. I don't care what you say, it tells you certain things. And a lot of y'all say, oh, well, my husband ain't got no high school diploma or no GED, and he do fine. I want you to understand that, yes, he does fine, but he will be limited. He will be limited unless he has hired himself, unless he is a business owner. But even when you get down to it and you're a business owner and you need certain types of certifications and all this just to get in these trade schools, you got to have some type of diploma or GED or something just to even go get in a trade school. And that's the truth. I ain't talking about the people that can come and do the shit with no paperwork. See, I, I'm, inter I'm more interested in you having your paperwork because see, when you got your paperwork, you can charge accordingly. See, when you got your paperwork, you can go out there and fix the air conditioning. I, I know this to be true because my husband is a commercial HVC. HVAC technician. That is what Spencer does. In other words, he do this photography and all of this kind of stuff. But his paperwork, his credentials, is commercial HVAC, meaning that he go fix the air for the plant. He go work on machines as big as your house. He go work on the air for the mall. He go work on the air for these big old uh, for for EBR school system. Meaning the, the type of equipment that he touched is bigger than some of the houses that people live in. That means you got to have paperwork to be able to go and fuck with that. You, you can't go just do that. Whereas, yeah, your husband know how to fix the air conditioner. Yeah, but he don't have paperwork, so that means he can't get paid accordingly. That means that your lifestyle, your, your income, everything will be limited because of his, because of his education. And you got your man. So we're not even talking to you. Let's talk about the women who dating. Know this going in it. If they don't have certain credentials, they will be limited. I'm not telling you to date them or to not date them because they could be wonderful people. But just understand going in it, what you're dealing with. All right. Your relationship with God. Told y'all, I'm a faith-based teacher. You need to know what kind of relationship he got. Relationship don't mean that he go to church every Sunday. That's not what relationship means. A lot of people get that confused. But I need to know what your prayer life like. I need to know that you understand where your help come from. Because when she get rocky, I don't want to look over there and you reaching for a goddamn crack pipe. Because see, when you know where your help come from, I don't have to worry about you going into all of these other directions when shit start getting funky. I need to know this during the dating process. Yeah. Yeah. I need to know. I, it's certain things that I need to know. Another thing that I need to know. Do you want children? Are you okay with me having children? Do you do you have children? How many baby mamas do you have? Or are they all for your wife? Because at this point in your life, at 40 years old when you're dating, most times you're going to run into me and they have children. Would you rather deal with multiple baby mamas? Or would you rather deal with one wife? Or are you like me and you don't want to deal with nobody? I don't want you, I, no wives, no baby mamas, no nothing. Mm -mm. <laughs> See this, when, when, when I get to talk to y'all, this, this, when I get to talk about my husband and my marriage, see, Spence already know, Sharonda ain't about to go out there and trying to deal with all these baby mamas and uh, other wives and all of this kind of stuff. You, you know what better right say, I'm going to take what I got and work with it. My husband ain't perfect. 
I love him to death. He's not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I'm going to take what I got and I'm going to work with it. Because I know what's out there on the other side. And it's baby mamas and ex-wives. And I know that I don't want to deal with that. Am I settling? No. It's just that I know what I don't want to deal with. So when you're dating, those are some of the important questions that you have to ask. You should not be on day three and day four and finding out he got children. And some for a wife and some for other woman and some possibilities. Because you got some men that say, oh, well, she say it. She say it's mine, but we don't really know for sure. You know what that tell me? You ain't doing shit for that child. And I got a problem with that too. I got a problem with you letting this child get this old and y'all don't know. You stepping into a situation that's sticky is what I'm trying to get you to understand. And you in the dating process. Meaning, if you decide that this is going to be your man, you also going to know that it's a possibility that this woman going to be showing up here, there, and the other. Do you want to deal with that? For a child, it's a possibility. Yeah. What else we need to find out? Your criminal record. Do you have one? I need to know what the charges are. I need to know these things. Why? Because I need to know what the fuck I'm getting myself into. And I'm going to tell you something. I really don't put a lot of emphasis on drug charges. And, and, and I'm saying especially old drug charges. And I'm not saying it's just because my husband have old drug charges. But studies show that a lot of men or women who go to jail for drug charges, a lot of times those people tend to be way more successful in, in the future. And the reason why is because a lot of times they were selling drugs as a means of income, meaning that they have like a hustler mentality. And they chose to hustle drugs because that's what was available to them. Right? Well, when they expand their mentality... They learned that they ain't got to sell drugs and they got other shit out that they can sell. Meaning, I can go start up a business and hustle something else and make money and do it legally. So I just want to let you know that for me, that ain't necessarily a deal breaker. Now you over there uh, with a rape charge, I don't know. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I ain't telling you what to do. I'm just saying that it wouldn't work for me. Because, and I know people get caught up. Especially with statutory rape. But in me, in my spirit, the way I feel about it is when you, I talk to my daughter who's 17 years old. And when she opened her mouth up, by the way she talk, I know she fucking 17. I know she a child. So my thing is when you got these charges, with these young girls who 16 and 17 and who lied and said they was 18 and 19, you knew when they started opening their damn mouth up the top that they had they they ain't had no life experience. You could tell their damn baby by everything they letting come out their mouth. For real. So for me, them type of charges, mm-mm. Other things that you need to find out about. Credit. We dating. Yeah, we dating. Credit. A lot of y'all like men with professional degrees. Meaning bachelors, masters, law, doctoral, all this kind of stuff. Even women have all of these degrees. But I promise you, 80% of them did not pay for school out of their pocket. 80% of them are in debt. Me, Sharonda right here, with a master's degree, with a whole lot of debt that go along with it, student loans. And guess what? When you get ready to go and get your house, your car, and all of the other things that you want to be able to have in life, that debt to credit ratio going to show up. So a lot of y'all look down on blue collar workers, meaning men that get out there and drive trucks, men that's electricians, plumbers, and all of this other stuff, men that have regular everyday jobs that might be paying them $20, $25 an hour, sometimes $30 an hour. Y'all looking like, oh, that ain't, 
that ain't enough. Mm -mm, that ain't enough because I got other things. And y'all caught up on the job title that he have. But the thing is, you, you liable to live better with a person who have a blue collar job than you would live with a person that have a white collar job. Because most times people with those professional degrees, white collars and all of that kind of stuff, they have a lot of debt attached to them. You don't have a lot of debt attached to you. Now you getting with him, he got a lot of debt attached to you. How is that helping you? How is that helping you? Again, I, I, I'm letting you know like Spencer, if Biden passes this, this, um, Whatever this law is, where the student loans gonna be forgiven, his shit gonna be paid for. He is literally, my husband is literally debt free outside of my house. Debt free. I can't say that. So if somebody dating me, as much as you think Sharonda Parker, this, 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 whatever, he about to he about to take on a whole lot of debt dealing with a woman like me. So even men, when you dating women. Because I'm saying it because this will be on my YouTube. You need to know what type of debt she got attached to her. For real. I see a lot of y'all saying, give me all regular man. Uh-huh. A woman say, I can get a man. I ain't never had no problem with getting a man. I want you just to pay attention to the type of men that you are attracting. Because sometimes we are throwing good catches back. Because they ain't coming packaged the way that we feel like they ought to come packaged. For real. Get you somebody who got some morals, some standards, values, that care about things in life. See, when you're dealing with somebody and they have things in life that they care about, they when they care about it, maybe you ain't gonna have to worry about nothing because they're gonna get out there and work for it. When I used to work for child support and them little young girls used to come in. And they used to open up their cases and they used to be talking about he he don't pay and he don't do this here and he don't do that there. And and I told him, baby, don't worry about the case. Don't worry about it. He young right now. So he got to get older. And eventually he going to want some shit out of life. And guess what? This is going to be right here looking at him. So I'm letting you know when you're dealing with men that care about certain things, you ain't got to worry about sleeping up under the bridge because they're going to make sure they got somewhere to stay. These are the type of people that you looking, that, that you are, are checking out when you're trying to go into a different direction in your life and dating. See, if they don't, if you dealing with somebody and he don't give a, he don't care about nothing. Remember we talked about trifling. The, the word trifle means not to care when you're dealing with somebody and he don't care about nothing. He's not a good candidate for dating. He don't care about nothing. In return, he not going to care about you. He not going to care about hurting your feelings. He not going to care about nothing. Lastly, when you dating, I'm not saying that people have to spend a whole lot of money on you all the time, every day. But I do believe a person should have to show themselves and show that they understand what it means to really step out and show you a good time. I don't have to experience fine dining every date night. If you follow me, you saw last night we did an at-home date night because, you know, we got COVID and everything going on, but I had ordered a game online. Um, the movie The Little Things came out with Denzel Washington in it. Really, really, really good movie. It's on HBO Max app if you have it. So we decided that, okay, this week we're going to, you know, do something at home. We're going to stay in this week. Because last week, yeah, last week we went to we went out to eat. We went to an actual place. We cooked together. I'm talking about we threw down with them tacos. They had ground meat in them, shrimp in them, mushrooms in them. I'm talking about we sauteed everything down. Boy, when I got to saute and them onions up in there. Boy, that whole house got funky. I'm talking about it was smelling so good up in there. Lord, have mercy. Anyway, I understand that every time we step out 
he don't have to spend a whole lot of money. But it's important that you know that a man knows how to take you on a proper date. My husband knows how to pick up the phone and call and make a reservation and take me to a restaurant that have real tablecloths, not that paper that they roll out. That you, they get crayons when you turn and turn right on the paper. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm just telling you about fine dining. When you walk in, you ain't got TVs everywhere. Playing sports and shit. That's a sports bar he took you to. That's not fine dining. The thing is, you want somebody that knows how to be able to show you a really good time when the time comes. I deal with so many women who have never experienced fine dining. And I feel like every woman should experience that at least once or twice a year. It ain't got to be for no holiday or anything like that because it's impossible to get into them places during the holidays. But I believe that he should be able to lay out the red carpet for you. And I'm saying once or twice a year because those places, a lot of times, they are extremely, they are pricey. But you get what you pay for. And there's nothing wrong with you wanting to have a nice experience. So when he's dating you, he needs to be able to show that he know how to properly take you on a nice date. Without expecting some ass. You know, I'm married. So when, when I get fine dining from Spencer, he his words is, you know, you order from the fuck side of the menu. When you date somebody, he ought not be telling you that you order him from the fuck side of the menu because he ain't even made it to the pussy yet. A lot of times y'all moving way, 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 way too fast. And you wondering why it's not working out. It's because everything is based on sex and you don't even know who you're dealing with. And then at that point, the only thing y'all got in common is sex. And all the time y'all talking to each other is to fuck and to hook up. And to bust a nut. And now the relationship is not a dating relationship. You done turn what could have been something special into a fuck friend relationship. You did that. I'll answer your questions at the end of the live because I can't really see. Again. Stop letting these people know where you live at. Everybody don't need to know where you lay your head at. My, I, I just feel like when you, when you know where I lay my head at, it's because we have had a conversation that we're about to be exclusive and it's going to be just me and you dating each other or we're exclusive and we have both said that, okay, I have other multiple sex partners and these are my other sex partners. Like, in other words, it's somewhere we done elevated when you know where I stay at. And when you know where I stay at, you don't get a key. See, you don't get a key until where, where I stay at until I get a ring on my finger. When I get a ring on my finger, and we, because see, I told y'all, when he put the ring on your finger, bitch, you got 24 hours to give him a date. 24 hours to give him a date. In other words, he needs to understand that he ain't gave you no shut up ring. He needs to understand that this ring means that we're going to the altar within six months to a year. I'm trying to teach you at 40 how to date. You ain't got a lot of time. So when he get a key, it's because you got a ring. And when you got the ring... You gave him the date, and now y'all trying to figure out how y'all going to merge our lives together. Th that's what's going on at this point. We done went from dating to engagement. Next wedding, marriage, altar, forever, whatever it is. But you can't get there if you're not intentional when dating, meaning that you're not dating people who want the same thing that you want. You should not be spending time with people who have told you that they don't want nothing serious right now. And you know in your heart, you're a wife. You know you're looking for your, you waiting on your bow ass to come pick you up and get you. 
you know in your spirit that you are a wife. So you don't have no business wasting your time with people who are not husbands. It's certain things that you can ask. And let me tell you, when you ask a man if he a husband, he should not be offended. And you date him and you and you met him and you let him know, like, look, you I, I like the, you know, you're a real nice looking man, physical attract, like I'm attracted to you in that type of way. But I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste your time. Do you want to be somebody's husband? Oh, no, 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 no. That, you know, you shouldn't even, that, that's kind of quick them. Uh, you, you, we just met and you already talking about marriage. See, when they get to talking like that, they let you know right there he ain't the one, baby. He ain't the one. He's scared of commitment. He, he's scared of it. He not the one. So, Y'all walk around and you saying, I ain't never had a problem with getting no man. I know a lot of women who ain't never had a problem with getting no man. But what type of men are you attracting? Are you attracting men that still want to play? Are you attracting men who have an interest in being a husband and being responsible? That's the bigger question. Because you don't need nobody that's putting that's just weighing your puss out. You don't. That ain't what you need. No, 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 no. If you wear this puss out, it's going to be because it's yours. And I mean that. All right. Grab bags. I have restocked them. Grab bags have been restocked. They are $30. This grab bag, just the two of us, has massage oil, mini vibrator, blindfold, sex, sex scratcher tickets for couples, sex scratcher challenge game, and a sexy surprise in this one. Take control bag has submissive spinner game, handcuffs, whip, blindfold, and mini vibrator in this bag. Erotic bag has massage oil, mini vibrator, handcuffs, Scratch out ticket for her, scratch out ticket for him, and erotic vouchers. $30 each, fully stocked. Valentine's Day, yes. Around the corner. If you're looking for red lingerie, yes, honey, we got it. Because y'all say that other one you had, all the skin was out. We got baby dolls in stock. We got other styles with garters in stock. We even got plus size. Go up to 5X. In stock. Plus size with the bell sleeves. I love bell sleeves, y'all. I, I just think bell sleeves look so classy. In stock. So we have everything that you need. We are fully stocked with enhancers. If you need to book your lingerie session with Spencer, email him at theperfectprints at gmail.com. Please stop inboxing me about pictures because I can't help you. I don't, I don't send the invoices. So you got to you gotta send him an email and he will send you the invoice, okay? Um, Yes, we will have chocolate-covered strawberries here at the PPG store February the 12th, 13th, and 14th because we will be open on Valentine's Day as well. Valentine's Day fall on a Sunday this year. Um, And you see the website. You see the cash app. My people on YouTube, feel free to send a tip. Thank y'all. And let me tell y'all something, because a lot of times y'all, if you want to know where your tips go, I'm going to be honest, a lot of times I do not spend it on myself. I don't. I have certain people that I help out that don't have moms, that don't have um, family, you know, and I help them out. A lot of times, I take that cash out money and I send it. Very seldom I use it for myself. The last time I used cash out money for myself was when y'all sent it to me and gifted me with the bag. But I always say, you know, everything, you know how some people, and I don't knock the people who every time they give, they on social media with it to let the world see. You know, everybody do how they do, how they do it. But I just feel like everybody don't need to see everybody that, that's getting help, you know, 
especially when you're dealing with children who not as fortunate. Everybody don't need to know what children you helping. Because a lot of times that's, that's what I'm doing. You know. But y'all be blessed. Y'all be safe. And shop at the PPG store. Because we got two day shipping. Two day priority shipping. So you ain't got no reason not to be able to get your stuff to you in time. Okay. Alright. And y'all. I know y'all ask me about these ones. Is, please put on some lingerie for Valentine's Day. Say the ones is for another day. Save the ones is for any other day. Get sexy. Make this motherfucker drool out the mouth for Valentine's Day. Okay? We got all other times out the year to do onesies. Get let's get sexy for Valentine's Day. I even I just ordered like 30 of the Delicia Meats gowns with the red robes to go to them. Because some women really like to, you know, be classy and kind of cover up a little bit. I get that. You know, everybody don't want everything coming out, but they'll be here. Um, today is Wednesday, so they'll be here Friday. I got some in stock right now, but I just ordered more. They'll be here Friday. Okay? You all be blessed. You all be safe. Thank you, Crystal, for my hair. I absolutely love, love, love. Yeah, I love wearing my hair. I, I do. I love wearing it. Now, let me say this here because people are like, huh? I have a couple of rolls of extensions added in here. So this is my hair, but I have micro links, some extensions that's added in there just to be able to give it a little fullness. And with my texture of hair, when you curl it with the high curlers, a lot of times it flops. So the micro link hair that's linked in kind of helps my hair to hold the curl a little bit better. So yes, Crystal, thank you, girl. And, um, oh yeah, Renata, she did my nails. I'm Look, I'm doing all the shout outs at the end. Renata, she did my nails. So go see her, Renata Jackson. She's now in Baton Rouge. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I can't even see what y'all saying. 